Well, for everyone at home watching, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the 2018 WRT Longhorn Open. You just saw a presentation from our tournament director, Soli Kaur, who is joining me on the mic. We brought him back because he did such a fantastic job last night in the semifinals where we watched Rodrigo Montoya take on Eduardo Goray in such an incredible tiebreaker situation. So we're happy to be back here again now where Montoya will take on Jake Bredenbeck. Welcome, Sully. Thank you. And uh, I think you all at home have seen this matchup before. These guys have matched up five times so far in the WRT lifetime. And Rodrigo holds the winning record here. He's leading in this series 3-2. Now, when these guys match up, it almost always goes to tiebreaker. So I think we're in for a very exciting final. Yeah, these guys are going to be a really neat matchup. Uh, Montoya, obviously, is one of the smaller players uh, compared to Bredenbeck, of course. He's going to make a lot of gets. Jake's going to be demolishing the ball. Let's see how these two match up. Montoya starts off serving. He's down the line from Bredenbeck for the side out. Perfect setup forehand just to get him nice and comfortable. Uh, these courts are going to play really well for Jake. These concrete courts hit hard, and uh, with him on these courts, that ball is going to be zooming. Perfect example there. Montoya is able to step in, hit the cross court with the forehand, and Jake just a little slow. Still warming up here, these guys. Beautiful cross court, wide angle, hits the crack, bounces out. If he could do that every single time, Montoya wouldn't have any answer. It's, it's such a wonderful shot. I'd love to see it hit more often. One thing that we saw from Bredenbeck last night in his semifinal against David Horn was a lot of patience, and he didn't let any emotions take him over. He was really uh, kind of letting Horn make the mistakes, and both of them were kind of battling that out. They had a lot of ceiling ball wars. And there's an example of the power just bruising the ball to the left-hand side. That's what Jake does well. And we'll just have to wait and see if it's going to be enough to overpower Montoya. Nice jam serve. And that's an example where Montoya is really going to give Jake some fits. Jake likes just bashing the ball. And Montoya actually has really good hands. So in this circumstance, all he has to do is put his racket out, make contact, hit the front wall, and Jake really can't do much. last minute turn to the forehand. I don't think Montoya was expecting that. No, I don't think so. Big skip with the forehand side. We saw this last night from Montoya. In his first game, he had about nine skips, and the majority of those were to the forehand side, and he starts in that fashion today. A serve, Jake Bredenbeck. Monster serve to the backhand side. Two bounces to the back wall. Montoya can't even touch it. Wow. Jake looks focused. Yeah, he's ready for this final this morning. This is his first Longhorn Open. This is, that's right. And he was talking about how excited he was to be here and uh, how tough it can be to get in. I mean, this event sold out in one hour. Oh, another, another ace Another ace to the forehand side. And we had a full 32-player draw. I mean, we have a wait list for the pros. I know there's 128, 132 people on the amateur wait list. Everybody wants to get in here. is going to want to scream right there. Ball crossing a little too close to Bred and Beck's body. Uh, doesn't help that he's wearing black and the ball's black. <laughs> Beautiful. 
Rifles. Forehand step in from Jake. Jake Most of point. the winners now coming from the forehand side. Montoya's got to put a little bit more pressure on Jake's backhand where he's weakest. Beautiful control by Montoya. Zero serving five. That'll be a short serve, just barely catching the line. We'll do second serve here. Another forehand. See you later. It's yeah. just what he does well. It is. And I think we saw Horn last night trying to keep that ball on Jake's backhand. And so I'd be interested to see if Montoya catches onto that. That is a wonderful get by Montoya for what was to be an ace serve by Bredenbeck. Uh, unfortunately, leaves Bredenbeck a setup. He gets a friendly crack from the side wall and takes the point. Another blistering serve. Wow. He is eating up that forehand side. And now since the thing about Montoya's style, and we see it from him, we saw it last night in the semifinal, he kind of like takes a little while to get the feel of his opponent. But Jake is just hammering him. Yeah, I understand taking the time to get feel, but he's down 7-0 in this game. Yeah, there can be it's, such a thing as too much, you right? You have to like either feel it, start feeling it now, or it might never happen. Seven serving zero. Two between two. the legs from Jake. Yeah, and all in all honesty, two really poor shots. Montoya just trying to slice it in. He kind of lackadaisically went at it and made a horrible shot. Jake didn't get his footwork set, thus having to take the uh, in between the legs. So Jake thinks this is a skip, but just a rollout. Unfortunately, that, of course, is short. So I think it's serving. a confirmation from his teammates there on the sideline. It's friends. always good to have friends confirm. That ball just short of the front wall, side out for Jake Bredenbeck. Yeah, so what we have here is Jake hitting every forehand beautifully and Montoya skipping most of the forehands. And there's another one. That, that serve is on point. It is. But in this circumstance, Montoya has enough time to get some good footwork to get, a, to get in there with a racket on the ball. He's just, he's just not there yet. Sticks with it. And that smooth control from Montoya right in the center court. With that backhand. Right, he's going to have to maybe try and turn on his serve here to get back in this game, which is his specialty if he can get it going. Ooh, he gets there. Get. Take it early. And he skips it. In the left corner, makes the right decision to cut the ball off since Montoya's in the back of the court with the previous retrieval. He has all the time in the world, and unfortunately, he hits everything but the front wall. And that dive from Montoya, I mean, that's going to be one of the differences between these two players is Montoya will be hitting the floor throughout this entire match. 
Oh, ooh, and he ooh. gets a friendly crack in the back corner. Montoya's probably got to be feeling here that nothing is going his way. He's going to get desperate. So we won't see Bredenbeck really diving because um, coming back from his labrum injury, he's under strict instruction not to dive, but he has that long reach and long steps to get there. Nice that, get. Montoya. Wow. Another, oh, oh and wow. It's gonna, Jake was there. He was. And he's going to get the call. Hinder ball. Montoya does hit a great shot, but Jake is fast enough to be able to get that ball. Montoya's on the ground, totally in the way. Referee makes the right call. We're going to play it over as a hinder. Eight serving two. Another good serve. Oh, Jake leaves the ball up just a little bit. I don't think Montoya was expecting it to be that kind of a miss. And unfortunately, messed up his timing just a little bit, and he skips that dive. Another wow. great serve. You know, we talked about this last night. This side glass wall on this court, it is difficult to see, and it's a great place to serve because of that, and on top of it, he's just drilling it to that side. Yeah, really strong start for Brett and Beck Montoya calling that timeout. We'll take a moment to thank some of our sponsors for making this event possible and putting together the Longhorn Open, starting with Cox and, Cox and Core Wealth Management. Sully Core and Brandon Cox actually help a lot of families with their financial planning and investment management. And although there's a lot of people out there that do it, nobody does it like Cox and Core Wealth Management. They cover every angle of your financial world and create a map to help you make smart decisions. So reach out to them if you're going through some new life changes or just thinking about your future. We'd also like to thank FixMyRacket.com. You have a broken racket, you can hit up these guys and they can make some miracles happen. You'll also find them at most events providing some stringing, like they're here at the Longhorn Open. We'd also like to thank Gulf Coast Graphics. For all of your printing needs, they got you covered from vehicle wraps, signs, and banners. You get quality work and great service at the same time. You can visit their website for all of your printing needs. Time's back in on the court. Montoya stepping back out. He called that timeout. It's 10-2. Montoya looking to uh, shake things up against Jake. That serve to the forehand is just on fire right now for Bredenbeck. Yeah, it, and, and this is where he does well. If he can get a serve uh, that gets a weak return and he gets the opportunity to set up, that's his game. Montoya's game, on the other hand, is getting in rallies, making good gets, and tiring Jake out. Uh, he's not getting that action, and unfortunately, Jake's getting it. And that doesn't help when you skip what is your bread and butter shot. I mean, that's his shot. That backhand spot is where he excels. If that's not falling for him, that's got to be frustrating. Ooh, Jake gets there. Nice down the line by Montoya. Getting back to the service zone, giving himself an opportunity to score some points. He's down 211. He's got a long way to go here. Yeah, it looked like uh, Montoya switching up that, that serve a little bit, trying to throw things off for Jake, but Jake able to take that one. Just a little too much spin when hitting that Z. Gives it enough to come off the back wall, and Jake takes care of it. Wow. I am just really surprised for Montoya. I mean, we talked about his body language a little bit yesterday, but then also how he's so hard to read. He doesn't emote too much, and you don't see too much coming from him, but... He looks a little down there, which I understand. Nice shot. Montoya yeah. also had an exhausting match last night. Yeah, absolutely. That one uh, was a tough one, went all the way to tiebreaker. 
and uh, you know sometimes I can take a lot out of you. But at this level, you've got to have the fitness and condition to be in it for this match. <laughs> With all the diving that Montoya does, though, I mean, that takes a lot of recovery for your body, too. And I have never seen more dives in my life than last night between Garay and Montoya. It was quite spectacular. They gave it everything. 12-2 for Brett and Beck. Ooh, Jake with the setup on the backhand skips. This is one of the few, you know, Times we've seen balls come to the back end, we see a skip. Let's see if Montoya can send a little bit more to that side and get back in this match. The ball will be just short. It's another unfortunate thing for Montoya. He's really good with his serve and unfortunately isn't getting very many in today. Beautiful pinch. Jake is getting to a lot of balls too. You can see them kind of colliding, you know, getting in each other's way, just a little bit on the court, but Jake has that long reach. He's getting to a lot of balls. Wow, Montoya's oh. not done yet. That is a statement backhand. Serve, setting up a weak return from Bredenbeck. Montoya takes care of it. Left pinch, beautiful shot. He's taking his time here. He's trying to find that momentum switch, right? Like start with one point, Let's take my time, let me work on another. It's a process. Another setup. You know, you, you can't say Montoya's not getting the opportunities. Right. Set up, doesn't do much with it. Ball is supposed to go down the line, but it catches the side wall, feeds into the center court. Jake is there. Um, it, it, there's just not a whole lot working for Montoya right now. serve another skip for Montoya that puts Bredon back up at 13-3 I think Jake's also really not just attacking that forehand but we've talked about that sidewall glass and how effective it can be to kind of use that gearbox black ball in there yeah and Montoya is obviously having some issues with it um, it, it's just so hard to see that ball in general but then when you're trying to see it at Jake's speed it it it's another level. Right. Uh, an opportunity for a spectacular shot behind the back. It's not going to work, and he's going to take a timeout. I think it's probably good. It's going to be Jake's first game point when we come back from this timeout. And, uh, Montoya, I think no matter what happens, I mean, we've seen players come back still, right? This could still be a 15-14 type of situation for Montoya. We know it's not over until it's over. Um, but I think he'll want to be taking some of that momentum into the next game no matter what happens, whereas Jake's going to want to just come out and crush this and close it out. Yeah, absolutely. And at this point in time, Montoya has to go in there, uh, take, do what he's been doing. He takes his time on the serve, relax. Um, but he's also got to try different things. To, at some point, you have to sort of give up on this game. You have to say, I'm going into the second game, and for right now, I just have to focus on finding something that's going to work that I can use in the second game that's going to put me back in this match. And we don't really see him doing a whole lot of different things. He's sending it to the forehand side from, from to, to, to Bredenbeck, 
and when he gets the forehand set up, he's unfortunately put it in the floor. So um, he, he's really got to change it up here and figure out what's going to work against Breidenbeck. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank everyone for watching the World Racquetball Tour, wherever you are watching. If you're watching on Facebook, we do have the Facebook chat feed open, and we welcome all your comments. So uh, thank you all for watching. We are here in Austin, Texas for the Longhorn Open. And if you're watching, don't forget to hit the share and like button and tell your friends that you're watching the World Racquetball Tour and anything can happen. Here we go. Bredenbeck will now serve his first game points, 14-3. And rightfully, that should be the serve the way, they end, the way that game ends because that's all we've seen that entire game. So many incredible serves to that forehand from Bredenbeck. He wins 15-3 in game one. Let's see what Montoya can answer back with when we come back in two minutes with game two. We'll be right back. We're back at the 2018 Longhorn Open and just about to kick off game two. We're here at the Austin, Texas, and all of the proceeds from this event go towards benefiting the UT Racquetball Club. So the money raised here at this event actually sends the players to the National Collegiates. This event was first created back in the 90s and it's been running for about 21 years now. And uh, the event sold out in one hour. So if you guys want to come out to this, watch these guys live and be a part of this huge event. There's over 350 players here this weekend. You gotta sign up early. Registration usually opens in uh, October, November, so mark your calendars, be looking for it. You can also follow the Longhorn Open on Facebook. We saw those killer serves and that's what Bredenbeck ended the win on. Let's see what he cranks out here. So she went to the back end. Changing it up, not a bad idea. Unfortunately, that falls a bit short. Wrist flick just not enough, side out for Montoya. Just a little too far behind him, didn't have enough room to get back there and get a racket on it. Second serve being called, that ball looked a little bit short. exactly what to do with that. Yeah, you definitely want to keep that ball away from Jake's forehand if you're playing him. And Montoya is just continuing to feed him. I don't know if this is just because he's not playing well, he's having difficulty getting it to the other side, or if he just doesn't know that Bredenbeck has a good forehand. Oh, jams him up there in the back. A serve for Bredenbeck. It's an interesting uh, ace for the Z. I don't see that very often. Wow. With authority. Right? It's all on those shoulders after that one. That ball looked warped going into that corner. I can't even imagine the pressure that ball receives off his racket. There's another one, blistering forehand to the oh my gosh. drive to the forehand. He is putting on a clinic. If anybody's interested in knowing how you hit a forehand, this is it. Scoops it. Oh, wow. So that's one of the first few rare skips we've seen from this forehand side. Zero three, Montoya serving. Nice. Just enough. 
sort of wrong-footed Bredenbeck. He can't, went one side, couldn't make it back to the other side. Clean pass winner. Montoya. It's one of the first few rallies I've actually seen him really control, you know, and that's really what it's all about. Before, he's just playing defense. He's just trying to do something with it and hope that Jake doesn't hit the ball well, but that's the first rally he controlled. Beautiful. Jake is really feeling it right here. I'm impressed. I've seen Jake play, but I don't think I've ever seen him play quite this crisp. Yeah, he just, I mean, he must have gotten a great night's sleep here in Austin last night. Because he is Another focused. beautiful serve. Now, we should remind everyone that Jake is not playing doubles. Or is Jake playing doubles? Um, no, I don't think Jake is playing doubles. So he's got far less matches on him than Montoya does. Oh, did he? Oh, it oh. does not make it, but an unbelievable effort by Bredenbeck to get that ball. The get would have been spectacular had it made the front wall. Unfortunately, just barely misses Montoya to serve. Nice backhand from Jake. Jake's been hitting the pinch really well. He's been hitting the down the line really well. It's got to be frustrating for Montoya. Jake will get a second serve. Point for Bredenbeck puts him at 5-2 in game two. He's doing, Jake's doing a great job of covering the court, but on those points that Montoya has scored, I feel like he's just been really forcing Jake to each corner. And everything is just coming off of his serve. Uh, I mean, Montoya can only just barely get to it. He, it's spectacular he's even getting to the serve, and then it's just setting up Jake. And that's another beautiful serve that'll cause Montoya to call another timeout. He is just running that right side right now. Nice execution from Bredenbeck. We'd like to thank Chuck Griegson for supporting the Longhorn Open. He's been a longtime supporter of this event, and he's also been practicing civil and criminal law for over 40 years, and his experience is unparalleled. He works with individuals and businesses throughout Texas and the USA. So if you find yourself in a bit of a legal dispute uh, or you have some contract negotiations, Chuck is the man you need to call. Check out his website for more information. And Splathead. They have some of the greatest cutting edge sports gear that you can wear both on and off the court. And they also provide sponsorship grants to players and they're a nationwide supporter of tournaments. So when you buy Splathead, you're pretty much helping make all of that happen. Go to splathead.com for more information. And the Texas Racquetball Association has just rolled out its new and improved website at txra.org. It's the fastest way to get tournament information and the latest news. So whether you're a novice or a pro, TXRA has something for everyone. They got your source for rankings and stats, and they also have an interactive map to help you find places to play. And a big thank you to Gearbox Racquetball. The official ball of the WRT is the Gearbox Black Ball and one of the main sponsors of the World Racquetball Tour. So thank you to Gearbox. Go to GearboxSports.com. They have more than just balls. They got rackets and plenty of gear, too. Back in the match, it's 7-2. What do you think, Sully? Uh, 
served the forehand? I, I, I <laughs> maybe. Oh, picks that crack up. And nice touch taking it out of the air. Jake is just firing on all cylinders right now. There's not much that he's missing. Just as I say that, a fairly lazy shot. Like that. <laughs> well, the World Racquetball Tour does play by the IRF rules. That's the International Racquetball Federation. So you can go to internationalracquetball.com if you're looking for more info on how the WRT matches are played. But it is best two out of three. <laughs> Three quarters, back court, catches the side wall, cracks out a bit. Not much Jake can do with that. And a skip. Now we, we're talking about Montoya being out of it just based off of his play, but now I'm looking at the score here and he's got four eight. So there's plenty of opportunity here to turn it around, but you know, his, uh, uh, that window is closing quickly. Another mistake there, hitting the pinch, basically sending the ball right to Jake, who's ready for it. Jake setting Montoya up off the back wall, and Montoya knows exactly what to do with that. Four serves eight. Four serves eight. Nice choice from Jake right down that line. I do like what Montoya is doing here. He's Move to this lob Z to the forehand side. Jake skipped one. This last one he didn't really do much with. Gave Montoya an opportunity. Unfortunately, Montoya didn't capitalize on that opportunity, but the change of the serve is working. We'll get a second serve. Looks like Montoya got a warning from the ref on that one. Nice. If you hit it too hard after the rally, that's not in good sportsmanship, and it's actually dangerous for your opponent, too. Another, Another timeout. I think it's good from Montoya. It's tough, though. It's, you know, he's the only one that's taken timeout so far throughout this whole match. Um, this is at least his third timeout in the series, right? His first one in game two. And he just can't really seem to find what's working against Jake. One thing that's interesting, though, is that he can't really seem to frustrate Jake. And I feel like Jake is usually one of those players who can be kind of emotional and you can frustrate. And that's one of the toughest things about playing Montoya is he can be frustrating just because he doesn't emote anything. Um, so... Good position for Jake. You can see him off on the sidelines talking to uh, David Horn, who's one of his teammates. He also has some support from Andre Perilla there on the sidelines. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here is the difference between fresh legs and tired legs. And Jake's looking spry. He's, look, he's got some pep in his step. Uh, Montoya is just sort of, the footwork is not quite there. He's a step late to the ball. He's and, and most times that's an indication of just being a little bit tired. And since he's in the doubles as well and uh, has got advanced fairly far in that division, um, that's just a whole lot more matches on your body and it's really showing in this match. All right, that's what he wanted from that timeout. He broke some of the focus and he gets his side out. 
shaking things up any way he can. definitely ones that can help gain the confidence. You know, it's one at a time, right? Just chipping exactly. away at this. You gotta take it each point at a time. Beautiful. He's really found something with this lob Z. Uh, it's coming at uh, an angle that is too high for Jake to do much with. He's trying to shoot and he's missing it, giving Montoya uh, the setup and Montoya puts that one down. Uh, so this is really now just a matter of Montoya capitalizing on the opportunities. Good oh. catch. Montoya is everywhere right now. Yeah, he's not oh. going to get that. Amazing display of athleticism. Montoya taking a dive on one side of the court, moving to the other side of the court. He's putting the effort. There's no doubt about that. But Jake with the blistering forehand. Beautiful get. Beautiful get right there. And this one is a perfect setup. Boom. <laughs> Shot, getting a little momentum here quickly, getting back in the service box. Yeah, he doesn't allow Brad and Beck any points. And that's what really this is all about. Brad has been getting rolls off of this serve, and finally Montoya is finding a little bit of a change, and this Lob Z has really been the, the spark. What a get. Unfortunately, he's not going to get an opportunity to get that. That's the thing about watching Montoya is so many times when he has those, it's not only an amazing get, but then where he places the ball, right? I mean, it, it looks incredible, but where that ball comes off is really important, too. That's a bit short. The referee calls it immediately and will be sitting here at second serve. Our referee is Gerardo Franco. He was playing in the event this week. That's a great job. Montoya expected that ball to come off a little bit more off the back wall than it did. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't. He didn't have enough room to get a racket around and skips it for a win for Jake. Jake's up 11-6 in game two. He won game one 15-3. Set up. Incredible. Montoya is sticking with it with a little wrist flick there, and it reaches the front wall. Jason, uh, Jake Redenbeck hits a nice wrap. It barely comes off the back wall. Montoya just gets the racket on it. Amazing stuff. That's incredible. fast enough to get that. Let's take a look back at that last rally before this one. With Beautiful see if dive we can get and get this, off this the back flick. wall. Jake goes up to take it early. Wide angle look at just this. comes off. Flick of oh, the wrist. Incredible. Oh, that camera angle was perfect. Can't believe that. Oh, 
Shea just and sticks that racket out just right. Hits that wrist. We were talking about um, the energy that these guys have to have uh, holding on here, and you can see Montoya. He is, I mean, both these guys are giving it their all, but he's diving and hitting that floor so often. Wow. Smooth recovery. Rodrigo Montoya won this event last year, so he is defending all those points to keep that at his number two ranking right now. Montoya gets it. Nice get. And that one too. That's tough. A little setup here off the back wall. And he puts wow. it down. They're giving us a good show. Let's take a look back at that rally. Look at these gets from Montoya. He hits the floor more than any other player I've seen. Yeah, and part of it is just, sometimes it's just tired legs and not being able to actually move to the ball and sort of diving out of desperation, but some of those are spectacular. There's some Looks frustration. Looks like Jake's going to take a time out here. Yeah, probably a good time for him. His first one of the match. He didn't call any timeouts in game one. We'll take a quick break here as well. Everybody, go catch your breath. We'll be back with more of game two in just a few moments. Welcome back to the 2018 Longhorn Open. I'm Laura McCormick with the World Racquetball Tour, and you're watching the finals of the Longhorn Open. I'm joined now by our tournament director, Sully Kaur, who is part of the, a big part of this event. Actually, this event is kind of your baby. Kind of, you Created yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. This event, um, all of the money raised at this event goes towards supporting the UT Racquetball Club, which you were also a big part of. Um, and the entire event is run by the UT Racquetball Club, and it helps them get to national collegiates. And it's a fantastic event. We're so excited as the WRT to be a part of it. We're all about the growth of the sport, all about getting players and more people involved. And this is the biggest event in Texas. Yeah, and the energy here this weekend has been incredible. Uh, we've got two different facilities. We've got 350 players. We've got over 200 spectators. Uh, the vibe in these gyms has just been awesome. Good rally from these guys. Uh, coming up after this, we will do a bit of an award ceremony. Uh, so if you want to stick around, we'll be live streaming that. We'd like to thank you all for watching out there on Facebook, and we appreciate all your comments. You know you guys are watching and supporting the World Racquetball Tour. When you hit share and like, it really helps us get those numbers up too and help share with everyone what the World Racquetball Tour is and how incredible these guys are. It's so fun to watch this talent at this level. It's a great show. Nice backhand. Montoya just exhibiting tremendous control. Hitting the left pinch, going back to this lob Z. Again, he's getting good setups with it. Let's see if he can capitalize. Did I say he's getting good setups on that? <laughs> Called it. No, that was not the call. <laughs> that was a beautiful <laughs> shot by Breton Beck. That is the opposite of what he gave him. He flat rolled this beautiful shot. Wall. And 
unfortunately, Montoya can't do anything with it. Sends it off the back wall for Bredenbeck to do something. And he puts it down with a forehand down the line. 12 serves nine here in game two. I'm still a little bit surprised that Montoya is sending about 70% of the balls to the right side of the court. I'm just not kidding. Another one to the right side of the court and Jake blisters a pinch in the right corner. And, and this is where you start getting to the point. You're sitting at 13-9, Montoya has to do something uh, different to get back in this game. He's trying to take a timeout here now, of course, to uh, break that momentum. But ultimately, he's not finding something that's working, and he's in trouble. Yeah, a good break for Montoya, but, you know, we keep seeing him kind of, it looks like he's doing the same thing in every timeout. The last timeout he called, he'd get, he did get the side out that he wanted. Jake, I think, is just checking to see how many timeouts Montoya called. Because as one of the rules, uh, you get two timeouts per game within a match. If you end up taking an extra timeout and you're calling one when you don't have one, that's a technical. And that's what our, that's what Bredenbeck's Beck's arguing right here. He's in his head. He's done the math and said, "Hey, this is Montoya's third timeout. What's going on?" He. And so when you get a technical, you also lose a point. Losing a point would be detrimental at this yeah. point in time, being down 9-13. He's struggling for points to begin with. Getting one taken away is really disastrous for Montoya at this point. I think it'll be really important for Bredenbeck not to let this you know, stick in his head. I, I don't think he will. He did a good job yesterday of keeping himself really focused in his quarter in his semifinal against David Horn. And in the quarterfinals, he actually defeated Alex Cardona. So Jake had a tough draw going into this too. In the round 16, he faced Shai Manzuri from Argentina. And in the round 32s, he played Raul Val Valadez from Laredo, Texas. So these guys have been playing a lot of matches, as we said. But again, Jake only playing singles, not playing doubles. So he does save his legs a little bit. So I'm not sure if we have resolution here, but obviously a technical was not awarded. That must have been his second timeout. And Jake to serve. Beautiful backhand by Montoya. Got it low enough. Fortunately, still going to the right-hand side. Uh, but uh, a winner for him. Ooh, just barely missing that shot. That would have been beautiful. So now this puts Montoya at 10. It's 10-13. He's going to keep chipping away, and I think this is part of the frustration, right? He's kind of gotten a little bit under Jake's skin with that controversy at the timeout. Finally put the setup down the right wall, inching his way back into this match. Score now is 11-13. He's taking his time, going back to the serve that got him back into this match. Lobsy to the forehand. Wow, that was a good serve, but Jake just Puts it down. Unbelievable splat. 13-11. There it is. Going back to where everything was working well for him. Beautiful ace to the right side. Now that'll put us at match point. Jake keeping his focus out there. And he puts that one down for the win. Jake is the 2018 Longhorn Open champion. Just outstanding. Another great performance from these incredible athletes. Well earned by both players.